Yo, do you play anything right now? Do you play any fighting games right now? Just Third Strike and uh, <laughs> Virtual Fighter Five. That is random. Yeah. I did not expect you to play Virtual Fighter Five. That's crazy. Yeah, I'm trying to be the first do you play Negro in Beat Tribe Cup. <laughs> Breaking barriers. <laughs> Wait. I'm just kicking guard three buttons at a time, son. That's how we breaking these bad backs. <laughs> Virtual fight. Oh my god! All right, let's let's get this started, Matt. Yeah. This is the this is the third episode of the Inside the Black Box podcast, and we got into something I think that's really relevant last week, which was concerning netplay. And if you play fighting games online and net play has touched you in some way. And I was just expressing my relationship particularly with net play. And so with that, I'll hand it over to you. Yeah, it, 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 that's where you done fucked up, Frankie. You you had the audacity, <laughs> the goal to express your opinion. And you, you, you know, you keep forgetting. You, you keep coming into these scenes with your little deconstructed videos, your bad New Yorker attitude, thinking you can actually express an opinion about the online world. <laughs> what the fuck do you think you are? Huh? I didn't. I overstepped some boundaries. Mm -hmm. Clearly. I, I, listen, I tell you this. I heard the song, the soundtrack to Biggie's Warning. When I woke up the next day after, after that podcast, <laughs> I, like, I looked at my Facebook Messenger, my text, I'm like, who the fuck is this? <laughs> at eight o'clock in the no. morning, talking about Frankie and this whole, whole online thing. So, first of all, I, I think you owe an apology to absolutely no one. <laughs> That's oh, the plot twist. <laughs> Before, before you punch me in the face through the screen, um, and you know, I'll just say this quickly. I, I think it's sad that um, we, we have, you know, a, a good group of people that actually put out third strike content. Um, shout out to Venkabot, uh, especially as new as he is, the hard work. Shout out to the deconstructed videos. Yep, and you know, it's. There's nothing wrong with contrasting opinions. And I, I just wish we could get to that point where we can talk about fighting games and especially, especially the online experience and we don't take it to heart. Um, your word isn't law and you're, you're actually a person who invites, you know, sort of like counter arguments, I, I, I would say, because you always mm -hmm. say, what's the feedback? Oh, and for the people looking at with these red glasses, these are the Farai's. Shout out to Farai <laughs> coming to my first co-op cup the looking Farai like Dirk Diggler, porn star. So, yeah, these are my Farai's in, in honor of Farai. But yeah, um, I would definitely want to oh, hear oh, your... And, and r r real quick, um, uh, Farai and Ryan have a great Third Strike podcast. That they oh, yeah. um i think it's how to be a third strike scumbag i think that's the name of it so <laughs> check that out check it out if you want some more long form conversation about things concerning i guess the japanese scene because they're over there right so i think that'd be pretty interesting for people yep but yeah go ahead yeah, and uh yeah <laughs> funny you mentioned that the first time i saw those two together the first thing they said to me is yo dude you gotta get a canadian suit it's like the fuck is that <laughs> And if you don't know, Google it. But uh, shout out to Pariah and Ryan. <laughs> but yeah, actually, I, I want to hear your thoughts now that your your 4 a.m. beeper's going off. And um... <laughs> Yeah, well, all right. So I guess to make one thing clear is that I personally have not received any negative feedback for the podcast that we shot last week. Mm. Um. It's nobody has come to me personally with with any um, dissent, with any ill opinions or um, anything of that nature. I've just received positive feedback in the DMs um, 
in the servers and text messages, what have you. It's just been positive. Now you did receive some, I, I, I don't, some criticism. Let's just say like you received like criticism for me yeah. on like directly to you. So what was, what was said in that? So the, the criticism basically was that you are not aware that you putting out those thoughts is actually, and I can't believe I'm going to use this word. I'm losing, I'm, I'm watching my man points counter just, just go down. <laughs> just about, it, it's detrimental to the growth of the scene. And I heard this oh. um, from a, a few people who reach out to me directly. And mm -hmm. I got to be honest, people who reach out to me usually just have a problem with how we get down in New York anyway. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. Before you respond, let me say this. I, I watch plays and, you know, fighting games and food go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're all hanging out to eat. We walk up to the counter and say, let me get a number two. You got these other guys that say, can I please have a number two? Those are the guys who have, you know. <laughs> I, I, it, that's easy. Well, the thing is, is that they say can I please have a number two? Mm -hmm. But in their mind, they're thinking you better fucking get me a number two. <laughs> right? So I think that what they think and their, and their words are incongruous, mm -hmm. which me, I'm okay with speaking my mind. And I prefer that people feel the freedom to speak their mind. Now, the person that you got the complaint from, we, um, one of them at least, the one that said speaking for most other people let's just say yep. you invited him to the show of course this week no of course right and what was the and what was the answer to that oh man another uh, you know we today is the day of big words all right i got an unequivocal no all right <laughs> <laughs> i got a prejudicial no it was a flat out no interest and right actually understand <laughs> Now, the person that said no to coming on to the show this week has continuously said no to coming on to anything Third Strike pod discussion related since the days of House of Strikes. Shout out to Mutant XP. Mm. Shout out to Nika Kao. Mm. So from back then, we were expressing ourselves, trying to promote, you know, the Fight Night, you know, series. And we got saucy it was fun it was meant to be let's get hype let's talk trash let's get these exhibitions something that people can look forward to seeing and even then even in the playful manner with which we spoke uh, about the players let's just say right the dissenting opinions that were expressed back then were welcomed onto the show to talk about it in a serious manner but we've always received no's. No's, 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 no's. So, pardon me if I am not exactly sensitive to the sensibilities of people that don't care about discussing. That's not on me anymore. I said what I said. You clearly have opinions. I've invited you on to talk about it, and you don't want to talk about it. I don't care. I don't know how many times I have to send out invites to just talk and i've had personal uh conversations with the person that uh, reached out to you mm. and we didn't necessarily get anywhere but at least we got our opinions out on front street let's just say now f for whatever reason i'm never being i'm never the one that's directly being contacted with this it's always somebody else i always have to hear it through other channels so oh, yeah. even then, I'm I'm not. Yeah, go ahead. Oh no, no, I'm I'm just agreeing. Could continue, sir. <laughs> My fault. So, um, even then, I'm never the one directly contacted with with any dissent. I always have to hear it through through back channels, through other people, and so again, you know, me being, I'm not even gonna say the person's name is not dignified. However, again, I'm not necessarily sensitive to that person's sensibility when just Saturday they were bragging in the PSN chat 
about how they got KD Alpha to block them on Twitch and getting everybody riled up. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So, so, so a couple, so a couple days ago, they were talking about how KD Alpha sense is all sensitive uh -huh. because he blocked somebody for their own personal reasons. Yet this person pretty much blocked me in real life because they don't want to have a conversation. Did you, did you so just pardon me if if I'm not sensitive to that person's sensibilities. I really don't give a shit because I think I've hand I've I've extended a hand out enough times to just have a conversation. Like this is all this is about. It's just about perspectives. You don't have to agree with people 100 percent to get shit done in life. And this is not just this one person, or you know, it, I I think it would be weird if all of us had the same thought process about everything even yeah absolutely even about growing the scene it's okay to have dissenting opinions um but what i do keep hearing is that and i think honestly it's, it's a lot of stuff from the past where that's yeah that's fine yeah that's fine too but let's talk thresholds here Nothing has been said that needs to be taken to the point of, you know, just wanting to distance yourself or not having a conversation. Um, we're all men here. None who, at all. We played third strike. If you played third strike, I love you. <laughs> you know, and, and that has always been. Well, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> you got to earn that shit. I got it. <laughs> well, that's just, just me. But you know, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. Like when we get together, it's for the game. And I'm telling you, I used to go to tournaments with a PS2 pad, trying to legitimate, legitimize that shit. I learned better, but never did I ever take offense to anyone telling me, "Matt, the fuck are you doing?" You know. Yeah, you you know what? I think just at the end of the day, I think that you, it's it's healthy to be okay with tension. Tension is okay. Yeah. We don't we don't all have to circle jerk each other or pretend that everything is OK all the time. You know, I like, like this is strange to me. Like, mm -hmm. I, I just I, it's I don't think that grown ass men playing third strike should consider anything that happens within third strike real tension. That's not real tension where I come from. That's not real tension. It's not. And so it's, it's it's a game. It's a game to me. It doesn't mean that I'm out here, you know, causing trouble on purpose. Uh, However, <laughs> it's not, you know, I'm not, I'm, I, I do want to have conversations at the end of the day. Yes. And, and I'll, give, I'll give you the last word. I don't want to spend any more time on this than we have already. We have. But yeah, I'll give you the last point. Go ahead. And, uh, no, but there, it's, it's a valid convo. And, um, yeah, I mean, I just leave it at this. Yeah, we're New Yorkers. We pop off. Um, but as long as it's not personal, green light. And, and, and just an yeah. opinion. We talked about Cam Grimlock, who, you know, claims to be the best player in, you know, in third strike, top five, strictly from his performance online and offline. I heavily disagree with him, but it's all good, man. It's just, just disagreement, babe. Oh, I, I don't think I've ever agreed with Cameron about anything. <laughs> but we love him. But that doesn't. But that doesn't. Right. That doesn't mean that when I when I see him, it's not love. It's not love. Now, of course, like you know, my my situation with certain folks is too far gone at this point for other reasons, not just for what you know we spoke about last week. Mm -hmm. But the point is, is that again, you got to be okay with some tension in your life. It's okay. That's how problems get solved. You deal with short-term tension for the sake of your long-term self, and that's it. That's just how life works. Um, but yeah, again, like I said, I'll, I'll, I'll get off of that. Yes. I'm, 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 I'm done. We're gonna, we're gonna have people on the pod that will disagree with us about things because that's healthy, and we have a nice slate of guests on the way. Oh yeah. And it's gonna be fun to pick their brains to disagree about shit oh, i can't wait to agree about things it's gonna be fun all right so with that fucking subscribe because it's gonna be a whole bunch of fun happening it's about so we'll get off of that in any case let's talk about the round table that happened the the japanese 
fighting game developer roundtable that happened, which was basically a a proxy for the Evo, the you know the pre Evo Top Eight event that didn't happen because mm-hmm. Wizard got gully. So it was their it, it was their way of showcasing whatever news they were going to showcase for um, for this coming year, right? That they usually showcase at Evo. Did you, what what did you get from that? Did you get anything from that? What did you think? Was it positive? Was it bad? Was like I don't know. What's your opinion? Twitterverse basically shares my sentiment that it was ass. Um, I literally got nothing from it, but what I mm-hmm. do feel from it that there is a disconnect between the player base and development. But you wouldn't really get that listening to them talk. It seems they're aware mm-hmm. of their problem. Maybe they don't have a solution. Uh, maybe it's too expensive. I'm not really sure what the issue is. Or maybe it's you know what I go through at work where I have to constantly tell my dev and technology teams that the client experience is paramount. I get it that it worked in QA. Client don't like it, so we got to do something. All right? <laughs> That's literally my life. So I'm not sure who needs to be taking charge of it. So, you know, when you're fighting, a, when you're creating a fighting game, I'm not familiar with the hierarchy. Is it, you know, a producer of the game? Who is the person that needs to tell the team, the you know, online got to be smooth, but we don't go? Uh, maybe it's not being communicated. Maybe it's not a priority. But I'm one of those persons who's very interested in Guilty Gear Strive. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I finally want to really get into Guilty Gear. And... I can just kind of see, like, if the online experience isn't good, you know, that'll dissuade me. Because I'm telling you, I started playing Market of Wolves on Steam again, and that shit is smooth, son. <laughs> mm. I like it. Yeah. I think, obviously, from what you've said, there is just a, a clear disconnect between the people working on the games and the people who actually play the games. Mm. I, I I don't think that it's I don't think the fighting game community asks for much. We want good online. We want good content. That's it. We want a fun game, good online, respond to when the community the, the community is telling you that things aren't going well. And again, it shouldn't take you know, the community is basically manifesting their own solutions, right? We got Fight K2 that is pretty much revolutionizing yep. the way that we play old man games. You have no DC. So CVS2 and Marvel 2 are online cap- capable right now. And people are enjoying the fuck out of it. You have uh, Parsec that people are basically um, playing offline games online now. As you know, you saw, um, we saw a set earlier with Coach Steve and um, Alucard playing uh, Dragon Ball Fighters with Sonic Fox. And they're enjoying that, even though it's a little bit unstable. The point is, is that I don't understand why the fighting game community has to go through fucking hoops to just enjoy their game at a playable level. It's, mm-hmm. it's fucking insane at this point. It just doesn't make much sense. That tells me that there is a disconnect between the people actually developing the games and us, the consumers. And I and you know what? I, again, fundament. Yeah, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Continue, continue. No, 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 no it's fine. Go, go ahead. I got another word for you: accountability. Mm. And I know what the problem is. The problem is me. I already fucking decided I'm going to buy Guilty Gear Strive. Like I made the mm. decision based off a trailer of seeing a mechanical Afro samurai, and that dude looks. Crazy. Nuts. I don't know if you've seen that. <laughs> no, I've seen us. I was watching. Yo, they made him with me in mind, you know, so I've already, <laughs> I've already decided to buy the game. So they know they're getting my money. Maybe we, as a consumer base, need to put our foot down. I mean, but it's it's strange because we're so easy to 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 win over. And I think we're finally getting to that point where new characters isn't doing it for for us. Mm-hmm. Um, but pretty much, they they they're allowed to ignore us for for the most part. 
and just put out a new character and then everything is forgiven or address one little thing here one little thing there the main thing that i don't think the fighting game developers actually understand just from a sheer like business marketing standpoint is that people just want a fun fighting game to play and nobody makes your fighting games look funner to play than its top players yeah i don't understand i don't understand why if capcom fighters has their own twitch i'm sure namco has its own twitch why aren't they hosting their top players when they're streaming online that's interesting <laughs> well they can't have that that choppy stuff out <laughs> well but, the, but that's i'm sure that's, that, that's a I'm really sure good that, point. I'm sure that streamers will acquiesce if the if if the developers are like, "Yo, we want to host you. Don't say fuck. Don't use licensed music, and we'll host." Yeah, you. I'm pretty sure. Oh yeah, they you in know, there. Right, but they don't do that. Like they don't push their top players to to, to the front, and they're they're exact. The, the top players are exactly who makes the game fun to play. And so you have top streamers. Let's just say. Who have maybe twenty thousand follows, yet the developers have more follows on their Twitches, and 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 their YouTube pages. Mm -hmm. It it should be their goal that they're not the most uh, uh, popular way to consume their game. It should be on the forefront of their agenda to make sure. Hey, maybe maybe uh, Sonic Fox, maybe Known Kami should have the most. Uh, maybe hook at God, right? Should have the most Twitch subscribers. Maybe it shouldn't be us. Hmm. I just don't understand why they're like. At least just it doesn't do. It doesn't take anything out of out of your pockets to just host them. You know what I mean? Like I just I all you have to do is just host them. If you make sure that those people have a following, they make your game look fun as fuck to play. I don't play Tekken, but I watch every year at Evo. I watch Top Eight, and it makes me want to play Tekken. Yes. Nothing else the game developers do throughout the no no trailer will make me want to play the game more than top players playing their game, making that shit look fun as fuck. So I think that was the biggest thing for me that they had all of that production to basically do the Evo announcement, which I understand is absolutely necessary. Yeah. And they touched on on uh net play very briefly but not really and again i just don't i i don't think that they understand that that's how uh th that's how particularly sports i guess that's how sports grow you know what i mean if, if it's 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 kind of the shield let's just say putting putting the players at the forefront of the of what should be getting attention yeah and you know, who do you to your think point, has more? Who do you think has more followers on 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 Instagram? Do you think it's Cardi B or is it fucking Universal, or whoever the fuck she's signed to? I don't even know. But 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 who do you think? I would think Universal. As crazy as that sounds. No, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> all they're all they're doing is like posting. I don't know. Like, hey, we're dropping the single, and that's it. They Cardi. make sure to market. They make sure to market their talent, and that's what fighting game developers don't do at all. They don't market their talent, and it's for free. You don't even have to do anything. You just gotta host them. You think? I mean, we're past the days of, I guess, the pro player scaring away the casual player. People are tuning in. There really is no reason why they're not doing it. I don't know. I, I don't get it. Unless they no hair off their back. Yeah. Okay. Oh, but again, I just think I, I just think it's, it's it's just fundamental to the way that they think that the business should run. I don't think that they're looking at their top players as a commodity in that way. Mm -hmm. But no, you know, or, nothing fighting game related gets more attention than their tournaments. Go ahead. You keep cutting well, out. Well, maybe they know. Go ahead. No, you Better? keep cutting out. Hold on. Um, yeah, I'll let you know if it cuts out again. Go, go ahead. Okay. Maybe they know about a little more 
Mr. Wiz like skeletons than they want. They don't want to put a mic on some of these guys. Might be an word here or there. Like I don't know. Maybe there's Amen. somebody in the <laughs> office like that. Amen. They could vet. <laughs> they could vet. They could vet. They could vet. Yeah, but you they know, could it, vet. you could vet them, but it's still not controlled. So they're gonna be in their house. No, of course not. But Whoever's... again, it's like, like, like you look at a person's track record and you determine that that's a good enough risk to take. If 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 these yeah. people have gotten whichever followings they've gotten on their own, they've obviously haven't gotten into any trouble. Like I feel like yeah. streaming YouTube are more are crazier about you know that type of stuff than a company would be if they said anything out of pocket. Like they know not to say anything out of pocket. So I don't yeah. think that that's like a good enough roadblock for the developers actually like pushing their players. Like there should be some kind of dialogue there at least at the very least. You know what we got to do, right? We got to you know we got to bite the bullet, get in our inner Karen and write a letter, man. Just gotta write. <laughs> I don't know. Hopefully, this will reach him. Who knows? Yeah, who knows? Uh, who knows? But it's that's actually a really good idea. Something I've never even considered. Like, they're there. These pro players that they can reach out to. Yo, Li Joe, come on, man. Dude, yeah. I'm saying there's so many players. There's just so many players that have earned the not only the like like the followings that they've gotten mm -hmm. but they've earned that privilege or maybe it's earning the right of of getting the company's backing that they've pretty much devoted all of their spare time to mm -hmm. you know what i mean like and honestly what what all of this is doing is giving riot a fucking roadmap to how to get all of these fucking fighting game developers out of here yep yeah. Get them the fuck up out of here. Like, that's right. what they're doing. Riot is going to bring down the fucking hammer <laughs> because they've done this shit before. Right. And, you know, and and that, the, to me, like, that's like the ultimate test, right? If Riot could, if Riot can't get fighting games up out of the ground, because that's where we are, we're on the fucking ground. If Riot can't do it, then nobody, then can, nobody can do it. <laughs> but they're looking. Trust me. They got somebody dialed in and they're looking at, at every place that all of these fighting game developers are fucking up at. But yeah, you know, you you honestly hit the nail on the head when you said that we're basically like battered, battered spouses at this point. Oh, we coming home. We, 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 we coming home. Care. You throw us out there. Whatever you want. Clothes. We come, We still coming home. <laughs> it's it's like it's like us the democratic vote, bro. It's like they like they don't value it. The Democrats don't value our vote because it's expected. Yeah, it's it, the same thing. They look at the map. Oh, East New York. In the bag, we ain't going. We ain't going there. Free, exactly. <laughs> Don't pass out no flyers or nothing. They, they in the bag. But yeah, but I don't think. I don't think you can get the community as a whole to say, "Nah, we're gonna boycott oh, the release." No, of course not. And you know, I I do think that fighting game developers could do more to make their content that they have in the game. Mm -hmm. um, more attractive to people who don't play in tournaments. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think that, you know, because there are a bunch of casual people who, they, like, the casual people are the are the people who make fighting games possible, pretty much. Yeah. However, yeah, yeah, great. Okay. I was just going to say that, you know, casual gamers are the ones that make fighting games possible. But it's always been the competitive play that pushes it to the next level, always. And so there needs to be some. They like it's like they're fucking up on both ends of it. It's like the content is never enough for casual people to like get into it. Like the tutorial modes never have anything substantial enough for people to make the jump if they want to become competitive. Mm -hmm. Like no, they got to go on fucking YouTube and do the legwork. It's just crazy. It's like it's like it shouldn't have to be that way. Well, actually, I maybe I'm just tripping. No, no, no. You're, you're, you're right. For the most part, I mean, the only two that come to mind is Virtual Fighter Five um, and Guilty Gear. Um, and I, I also dabble in a little Grand Blue. It was pretty extensive, so hopefully that'll be the trend going forward. That you'll get, you know, 
intuitive training systems uh, for one players. But I would love to see the numbers. Like, what is the age range? I'm cutting out again. Oh, yeah. Can you hear me now? Your video's cutting out again. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. What about now? Yeah, everything's good. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. I, I would love to see, like, the numbers and, like, the age group mm -hmm. of who's buying these games. Is it, is it really the casuals really making the purchases? I, I got to expect. Find that. I don't know. I don't know, but I, but I don't know. I feel like I have to expect it just because, you know, the number of online users isn't the number of sales that they have. It's just like a big gap between that. And yeah. so there's got to be people who just play the fucking game and, you know, do some Hadoukens and some, some story mm -hmm. mode and stuff like that. And then just, you know, never touch online because they know it's a fucking war zone. You know what I mean? Like, I'm sure that they're those people. All them people watching anime who don't admit it. <laughs> They're the ones buying Yo, it's, <laughs> <Yo>. <laughs> it's true. Like, why not have an online lobby where it's like you can only enter if you have less than X amount of hours into the game? You know, know. Or, so that, you know, pe people who aren't fucking cracking out on the game, like, just dissuade every new player from playing. And I guess that's what the rank, the, the ranking system is for, but it's pretty yeah. imperfect. Um, but I don't know. I, uh, that that round table was um as as much as the as the industry tastemakers wanted to spin it into something positive mm -hmm. i just could see nothing but the negatives in it and maybe that's just where i am in my life but i all i could see are the fucking negatives dog like <laughs> it's just you cut out again what'd you do uh nothing uh <laughs> am i back yeah yeah you back yeah, maybe it could be the internet problems are still have. I'm, I'm wired. We ain't on wireless, baby. That's crazy. Yeah. Actually, give me your thoughts on this. What I did see was <laughs> I saw a funny ass tweet from Justin Wong where he was like, "Whoa, fifty percent of y'all on Wi-Fi?" Like, he was like <laughs> all right, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's yeah, wrong? That's yeah. the little bit. <laughs> well, that's the little bit that that Harada, you know, uh, mm -hmm. said about about online when they touched on it was well, it was that and so i at, at a certain point i understand the perspective of like yo 50 percent of y'all motherfuckers ain't even wired in the first place so don't talk to me about that play yeah so i i understand it in a way but it still doesn't address the 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 core of the issue which is that it's pretty unstable regardless it is unstable because when i'm wired when i'm wired and i hit somebody up to play and they're wired it's not good it's it, it's hit or miss let's just say it's hit or miss. and it shouldn't be that when the core of the appeal to the game is playing other people like that shouldn't be it sorry yeah. and, and it's it's yeah go ahead i love the arguments i was seeing in the responses like there were a lot of wi-fi warriors out there um oh my god the vr troopers they was deep <laughs> they're like listen dog I can't be stapling no Ethernet cord, cord from the from the top floor to the basement. Nah, water <laughs> for life. I like. Oh my god. Oh You're man, not lying dog. That shit is crazy. Uh, it was funny. I'll be. They were like Google <laughs> order for life. Like this shit was hilarious. Yo, in a sense, I get it, but then there, I don't know. I'm I'm just an idiot talking into a microphone. Like I don't know. If they can make it so that Wi-Fi players only get connected with Wi-Fi players, you know, it's not, it's not hard. I, like, you know, if 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 Fight K two can have that that functionality where you know whether your opponent's using Wi-Fi or not, I'm sure that these newer developers can have some kind of matchmaking system where that's where that's it, where I can choose. Hey, I only want wired connections, not no fucking green bar, okie doke shit, because that fucking green bar. <laughs> Okie doke shit be doing be doing bone collector <laughs> moves on you. Where, where you go into a match and you swear it's five bars and then you get in and nah, it shit turns to two. You thought it was sweet? Nope. They be, be straight crossing you up, dog. Shit is crazy. <laughs> so uh, I, I don't know. know. They gotta revamp their shit though, for sure. Yeah. They'll call Usher, because this is a confession. When Killer Instinct came out on Xbox One, uh, yeah. me and my girl had just moved in together. 
and mm-hmm. I, I was a Wi-Fi warrior on that, but it was so smooth, no one knew. Oh my god. <laughs> Yo, Killer Instinct is has been goaded, I think, for having the best online play. They made it happen. It's too bad it's on Xbox One, bro. Nobody's buying the Xbox One just for Killer Instinct. <sighs> they fucked up. Oh. They should have brought their talents over to, to, to Sony. Yeah, you know, I just really, yo, man, you just made me realize I'm a fighting game hoe. Like, you are, bro. You straight up buying consoles for one game? That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, yo, they tricking you out, bro. <laughs> yo, you the big bro at the at the nightclub. He's <laughs> getting all these girls' drinks. You don't even know them. <laughs> like, Blue Top, you want a drink? <laughs> That's you. You're that guy. I'm really thotting out right now for these uh, fighting game companies right now. Like, I'm a guaranteed paycheck. As I'm on PS4. I, that's it. I already put the money aside for the PS5. Like, I already know that's a credit card swipe. 100%. That, <laughs> they got me on that one. Yeah, they want 100%. Yeah. I'm going to get the Zion 2K21 too. <laughs> <laughs> I want that exclusive cover art, dog. <laughs> I'm a hope for Sony. I'm not going to lie. You know what it is? This segment can be summarized basically saying you hoes get what you deserve, man. I know. It's true. I'm such a hypocrite. We keep coming back to the well. Yeah. That's why I really hope Riot just comes in here and just gets everybody the fuck up out of here for 2021. I don't want them to go away. I don't want people to lose their jobs. But I just want them yeah. to be like on edge. I want them to be really focused when it comes to making the next entry. Like I want them to blow up 2022 fighting games. But I really need Riot to get all these motherfuckers the fuck up out of here. I just need that to happen. Wait, elaborate on they. Because Capcom can do no wrong. All of them. Nah, all of them. Get get them all the fuck up, out here, bro. All of them. F- just for one year. I just need them to be on their toes. That's mm-hmm. all. I just want them to, to to be on their toes. A little, a little, a little, a little fire, right? Yeah, just a little bit. I'm gonna buy Street Fighter Six. Don't you worry, beloved. I just need you to be on your toes. I just need you to mm-hmm. come correct. You know what I mean? No, Cap- that's all. Somebody gonna tell Capcom what she said, and tomorrow just to fuck with you, they're just gonna tweet the number six. Like shut the fuck up. <laughs> That's a fact. <laughs> Watch this. <laughs> we ain't changing shit. Yo, <laughs> this not. They really not. And I'm gonna buy yeah. that shit. Yep. And I'm gonna be like, nah, but you know. Shut it, up. <laughs> it, <laughs> it's it's all right, you know. Like, yeah, it's all right. You're like what? You just got to get that green bar on a full moon. Mm-hmm. Wire everything up. Get your family off Netflix. You gonna be off there, Netflix. Bro. <laughs> they might hit you with this. Make they... them read a book, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, they 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 got us, man. They got us. <sighs> I know. This is speaking from a a a, a place that's a little bit in bad faith. Because I know I'm such a hypocrite for this shit. Like I'll, I'm gonna buy every fighting game that <laughs> comes out. Um, but I guess it's just in a perfect world scenario. I would hope that developers at the very least just push their players just at the very least, just, just push them. Cause they're the ones logging in the most hours. They're the ones, you know, creating the content that gets your game out there. You know, like what, like what, what bad does it do for, I don't know, Capcom, you know, street fighter or, or uh, Capcom fighters to just, I don't know, tweet out one of their players uh, YouTube VODs, you know what I mean? It just doesn't, it doesn't take much, but it, it'll be, it'll be good to bring eyes, you know, to the games that they're pretty much selling us for five years straight. You know, I would assume but that's it. Then that's all I know, got I, on that. But, but <laughs> I want to hear what you got to say. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would assume the player would have already reached out to Capcom with that idea and they thought of it themselves. So I don't know. somewhere Capcom, Maybe they just think there's a risk or they're lazy. What? Um, you know, when it's just retweeting. That's all you have to do. And you can get more people playing your game. 
when Anniversary Collection came out on PS4, there was a guy in the PS4 chat when we would like complain to each other. He would like go out of his way to talk about how it was hard to develop this, this. And I would say to him all the time, oh, fuck, I know you work for Capcom. Just say it. (laughs) (laughs) He (laughs) He was a sleeper cell? He was a sleeper. I'm like, yo, I work with dev guys for a living. You are talking straight from the playbook. Like, mm. you sound like the guy from the water boy. You know, he's looking in his book. And looking at the coach. Like, I know you, man. But whatever. Retweet your fucking top players content. Capcom. Yeah. Um, maybe they'll do it. You brought up. Maybe. I don't know. But uh, you brought up. Um, an interesting topic that I think would benefit uh, people who are, I guess, into the game. I don't know to what capacity you wanted to speak about balance, balance beam, okay. balancing not characters, but balancing your personal shit, your life, real life with fighting games. Um, so I'll let you have the floor. Go ahead. Yeah. And, you know, this is something I ask a lot of players, too. Like, you know, especially on, like, Facebook chats, I always like reaching out to guys I've met, like, how you doing? How's work? How's stuff like that? And mm-hmm. there's just some guys. Like, I don't know how Justin Wong does it. How does he stay so strong with a kid? Full-time job. And I struggle with it. Like, uh, even, if, <laughs> like, before, when I would have girls come over to the house, I would have the joysticks <laughs> out everywhere. No surprises, all right? (laughs) Know what you're getting yourself into. Yeah, like, we're going to go out, show you the time. But sometimes, as soon as I get home, I'm going to get the clicky. (laughs) So, (laughs) yeah. I'm going to tap some buttons. You got to have some (laughs) So, you know, I set that tone early. You look in my living room right now, there's sticks everywhere. Ethernet cords, (laughs) posters. So, you know, but especially with quarantine and like COVID, I think it's gotten a little harder to maintain. Mm -hmm. Like you just don't always want to, you could get a break from the games. Um, But I always say this quarantine is easy for us. Oh yeah. I'm calling it a comeback. We've been here for years. (laughs) Clicking these buttons. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Like we in there. Built for this shit. Yeah. Not good. Oh, nothing. Um, I just think it's um, it's an interesting topic, and it's something that I think if we really got into right now, you can break down um, exactly how you balance it in your life. It could be useful for um, people who are uns- like whether they're just getting into fighting games and they're trying to um, uh, understand how much time they should put into it. Um, whether or not they should um, devote X amount of time, how much they should devote to themselves outside of it, because it's not really a booming industry as, um, as we know, as we just spoke about. And so I don't know when it comes to Justin, I mean, from the amount of stuff that he puts out, it seems to me like he's paid to put those, that stuff out. Like that's that, that's it. That's what it looks like to me. I don't Mm -hmm. know. I could be wrong. But just the amount, the consistency that he has, um, it just seems to me that that's how he makes his bread. But I don't know. I don't know if there's more to that. Um, I mean, but he's clearly a fucking machine. He's a machine. Because he's a machine. Um, and he's making it work. But that's not, you know, your average fighting game player's experience with it. Because um, it's just not at that level yet. So, um, we'll talk. but talk to me about about that about yeah. how does balance it how does balancing fighting games look like to you yeah and the reason because you're, you're a yeah. successful person so i think it's important that people heed what it is that you have to say so you do have to kind of chop up your day and okay. you know, really that like i never ever wake up later than seven thirty. Uh, okay my alarm and with covid now i sometimes i even have it at six thirty. But one of the reasons I brought up Justin, when I think about balance, is that he's always positive. 
Like I, I love seeing a tweet from Justin. Like it's either something about a game, an anime, a Twitter, and it always makes me think like, how does he do it? Like, because he's putting out videos, putting out videos of the baby, and that's awesome to see too. And sometimes I'll right. look at my life and I'll be like, you know, sometimes I do find the balance. You know, I'll mm-hmm. finish a conference call, I'll hop on fight K for like ten minutes. <laughs> 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 And then I'll shoot that email. So Frankie, here's what I call my dumb fucking advice. I say just do it all at the same time. My work day <laughs> consists because even in my because <laughs> even in my office I have it set up. Yeah. You know? So I play, I do my conference calls, I send my emails, and I think the work life balance is just the effort. You just have to do it. Mm. Or you don't want a couple days to go by, or even years, and then you start talking about the woulda, coulda, you know, shoulda. Right, right, right. Yeah. So you just do it all at the same time. You mash that shit together and just roll it down the aisle. Yo, man, I've been caught a few times not hitting that mute button on them Zoom work calls. It's like whoever's clicking, <laughs> put yourself up on mute. <laughs> My bad. That's bad, funny. That's mad funny. Trying to hit this overhead, son. <laughs> <laughs> Mute it up. Oh, shit. You're a maniac, too, I imagine. That's crazy. Like, I couldn't imagine that. I'm I'm, I'm a little bit different in that way mm-hmm. where um, I, try to, I try to really make the amount of time that I do practice um, as useful as possible because I honestly don't like spending – too much time just grinding against uh players let's just say like um especially online um so if i do turn on the game i have like a very uh regimented way that i practice and so that helps me cut down the amount of time that i feel like i'm playing and getting something good out of it It, like streamlines it like i'll play in two in two 25 minute bursts of just training mode that's interesting. That's that. That's all. I try to keep it as minimal as possible, because there's just other things that I want to put time into, mm. and so I think just playing the game kind of um, frivolously and mm. putting X amount of hours into it isn't going to make me feel good as a person. Like, I just feel like there's just other things that I want to like get done throughout the day. Yeah. Um, but that's how I approach it. I mean, it's worked out pretty okay for me, I think. Oh, yeah. I think it hasn't been that bad. You found what's good for you. But I have a question for you. You never just get on and just just mash buttons? Just, you know, I feel like... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Like, there... Um, I feel like I do that when I have nothing else to do, for like, for the day. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll hop on... And I'll, I'll I'll be sacrilegious and hop on some online Wi-Fi shit and just play on a pad. I I played Third Strike on a pad so many times. It's not giving a fuck straight up. <laughs> yeah, you a hair funny because yo, there's some people. It, it's just funny because like uh, like you see the uh, uh the the comments uh, like on Discord like to the grapevine like oh man I you know I beat Frankie I, like you didn't know that was my pad Ryu all right you that didn't was- know that. That's I. Right. I don't gotta say it. I'm a gentleman, all right. I don't gotta. <laughs> yeah. I don't gotta put it out there, right? You won. You got it. Uh-huh. I'll, I'll, I'll big you up. But um, yeah, I'm a I'm a bit of a rascal on that. You know, when when I just want to like pop it in sometimes and not like take it too seriously, I'll play on a pad. My yeah, Pad well, Yang is getting up there. A Pad Yang. <laughs> That's He's actually up there. Son. Third strike on a pad is cheating, man. That's just crazy. It's mad nice. Like I can't do Dragon Ball motions. I'm a, I'm a uh, Dragon Punch motion. Uh, so that's why I stick to the quarter circle characters. Quarter circle. I use the analog. I'm I'm <laughs> I'm a filthy casual. I use the analog for all my motions. I move around with the D pad and I'll switch the analog for a combo. It's crazy. That's hilarious. I I play Dragon Ball on on pad too. Like that one I actually play on pad. But like seriously, I play that shit on pad. Like oh, that's kind of like I need to see fun, that. Bro. When shout out to next level when it opens, I, I need to see that. <laughs> oh, word, word. I got my legs crossed. <laughs> I'm just 
<laughs> no intensity. Just got my legs crossed. Just playing the shit on my lap. It's like I'm like like I'm reading a book. That's how it feels like. That's hilarious. Um, oh my god. Yeah, the fact like you know, I, I live with my girlfriend and her daughter, so all right. Uh, the confession. So I have this thing, like I'll put on season one of Highlander mm -hmm. and I'll play Third Strike. And I'll hear both the room doors close in stereo, like click, click, because they're like. <laughs> <laughs> they're leaving the living room. They know it's about, all they're going to hear is sword clashing, queen <laughs> soundtrack, and me getting hyped when I hit overhead super with Alex. So, you know. <laughs> it's funny. Sometimes a daughter will come out the room and be like, can you keep it down? I'm trying to talk to my boyfriend. I'll be like, no. He wants to hear this shit. But, you know. Tell him to run the set. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him to hop the fuck on. Yeah. I'll first to five him right now. Yo, <laughs> on a side note, if anything happens to me, you are a witness. All right. This kid watches me play Third Strike and fighting games all the time. Never takes interest. I finally bought Grand Theft Auto. I can't pick up the sticks without her trying to play. All she does is run over people. <laughs> You know, you got a little sociopath on your hands. Yeah, she's a psycho. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's interesting too. I want to get into it because we were talking about balance, and it's like I I don't know. I I can't speak for um other people. I can only speak for um you know you and and my situation. And is that we have significant others that we live with yeah. that have no interest in video games. I don't think that's the norm. I think it's usually the opposite when it comes to um, guys, you know, who play fighting games, um, yeah. at least from what I see. And, you know, Twitter is not the real world at all. But I just see that that's a, a theme, at least that, you know, at least like they, they have that to nerd over. And so it's not usually contentious. Yeah. And I know what type of person you are, but I don't think the people know. So if it gets contentious in that way, what happens? Oh, Listen, man. <laughs> yeah, this this can go really left and really right, really quick. First of all, I mean, if I ever heard even one nary a negative word about any video game playing, yo, man, that bags would be packed so fast. Like, <laughs> you gonna throw her shit out the window? <laughs> It's a non-starter because you knew this when you signed up for the draft, right? <laughs> you know, when, you, when you signed up for the draft, but that, that rookie contract, I'm that rookie contract. <laughs> but I, I'm so strict with it because I make it a point to give her the balance too. And I, I think mm. to your point about relationships, you got to know what your significant other likes. My girl loves to eat, even though she's like skinny as shit. So, um, strong and I like to eat too, as you can tell by my fat ass. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I make it a point for, you know, birthdays and just every week we find, we try to find like a new restaurant to go to. And right, right, right. that's where the balance comes in. Because I want to do everything. I got to turn off the games and maybe I'll play from midnight to two in the morning. That's just the way it's going to be. I'm right. still getting my work done what you got to do but don't forsake significance others you know i tell my girl all the time like we be in the bed watching like co-op cup before we started going i'm like <laughs> we'll be like girl i got one hand on your thigh my eyes are on the stream we good like don't don't <laughs> don't worry about them bright lights coming from the tv <laughs> <You know? laughs> just <laughs> i'm here i'm here <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Yeah. No, that's so true, man. It's really uh, that, that's a good point you bring up about about um making sure that they have the space too. You know yeah. what I mean? That to to really make a concerted effort because I do understand that this shit takes a lot out of like a lot uh, a lot out of my time. You know, and yeah. even. Like, even if I do limit it to, you know, 30, 30, 50 minutes, let's just say, like, less than an hour, it's the weekends that I'm gone. 
right? Like when I go travel, it's the weeks that we've been gone for Co-op Cup. It's, um, and it was going to get, it was going to pick up a lot personally for me until uh, COVID happened. It was going to be like frosty. It was going to be, um, yeah. what, what you call it, a final round. It was going to be, you know, so it was going to pick up. And so um, uh, you just, what's worked for me is trying to give her her space in terms of making sure I can facilitate whatever it is that she likes to do. Yeah. And just try to meet her halfway. Because I'm a recluse. Yeah. I, I like being in the crib. And so if she wants to step out for a walk, no matter how fucking far it is, I got to do it. Yeah. And you know what? I'm probably going to enjoy it. I'm going to go kicking and screaming, but I'm going to fucking like it. You know? <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm going to like the, 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 the feeling of that ultralight, like touching my skin. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, it's just, it really is about that, that those little, it, it's about the, those micro, um, uh, those like microcosms of, 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 um, what you call it, of give and take, you know what I mean? It's those little moments of, of uh, acquiescence. I think that keeps it in, in a, in a healthy place. Like, I don't want, I don't want to resent anybody for the things that they do. And so yeah. again, it's just the little things I think, but you know, feel free to kick a bitch out. Like, like Matt said, you gotta, you gotta go, man. man. Like, uh, like, like they got to know straight away. Like, like the first time I met up with Rosa, it was at the arcade. Oh. The first time we met up, I was like, I'd be at the arcade <laughs> from this is in the summertime. I was when I was like out of high school, like just out of high school. I was like, I'd be at, at, at Chinatown from 12 to 3, uh -huh. 12 to 4, Monday through Friday. I'll see you if I see you. And she showed up. So she knew what was happening. Set the tone. Was. Set the tone early on. First time they drive to the basket, elbow in the Say chest. It again? That's how we play in the day. Like, that's how you set the tone. <laughs> elbow in the that's chest. Funny. Like, oh, that's how we play. That flagrant too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> A jail ball. Jail ball. You know what I I got from that? Um, correct me if I'm assuming. What's up? I find a balance, especially with our loved ones and like this this niche thing we're in. It's easy, mm -hmm. and I think it's easy yeah, if you I make mean... it a priority. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. You said it's easy if you make it a priority. Yeah, like that's just. I know I press these. I'm gonna be clicking and clacking, so I just make it a point to say like you know even I'm gonna be clicking and clacking. I do have to make sure. I give her her quality time and do the things she likes. But the way I jimmy it, and this is for all you guys out there, download Uno on whatever game console you got. All right, it's like put it. It's like giving a kid a slinky and they like, go get your ass over there in the corner somewhere. That shit is go. <laughs> Uno, Uno, yo, on, yo, Uno on PS4 is the great equal. <laughs> Why haven't we had a side tournament for, for Uno yet? We got to get one going, dog. Yeah, Next man. tournament. <laughs> Ladies love Uno. I don't know. I don't know if it's the colors. I, I, I don't... <laughs> <laughs> the colors. And, I, and I'd be amping it up too. I'd be in the background like, ooh, he made you draw four? You soft. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't plan for that? You planned for that? Soft. <laughs> Yeah. I thought my baby was smart. I should not gonna plan for that. <laughs> Guess who's reinstalling Tinder? <laughs> you be like, let me go in the app store right quick. You, you ain't focused. Yeah. <laughs>